Well, hello, dear friends of African Enterprise, wherever you are in many different places. I just want to thank you for being our friends. I want to thank you for your prayers and for your generous giving, which means just the world to us. Please continue so that we can continue to preach the gospel on this great continent. And I also want to encourage you this Easter, first of all, to look afresh at the cross. The cross as the place of forgiveness. That's what everybody needs is forgiveness for sin. At the end of the day, that's going to be the key thing. Did we know and find the forgiveness of God? Jesus said, go out and preach the forgiveness of sins. And uh, to be forgiven is amazing and vital for life. You know, in New York, there's a cemetery with about 100,000 or more graves. And in the cemetery, there is one grave that is startling in its simplicity. There's no name of the deceased. There's no date of birth, no date of death. Just the word forgiven. Forgiven. And that's what you and I need to know let alone to have as an epitaph forgiven and to know that forgiveness. How wonderful. That's from the cross. And then I want you also to look afresh at the resurrection. Because the resurrection is in a very special way, a place of power or the demonstration of God's power. And it comes to us through the Holy Spirit as a power, first of all, for living and coping these difficult times. A power to equip us for service, witness, ministry, caring, acts of compassion, and a power for healing. It was resurrection power through the Holy Spirit that came down as the apostles went out and preached the healing message. That can still happen today. We see it happening many times, actually, in Africa. But if we think of the resurrection, I suppose the question comes to us, is it really true? I mean, did it really happen? Is it factual? And I want to tell you, I believe with all my heart that it is. The biggest thing, of course, is the empty tomb. And the empty tomb could only have become empty in one of two ways. Either someone, friend or foe, stole and removed the body, or Jesus rose. I don't believe it could have been a friend or the disciples. They were too terrified and frightened and hidden away. To, go, to, to, to embark on that kind of exercise, bold exercise. And there was a God placed there, Roman God, to prevent any such thing. It wasn't friends, nor was it foes. If it was the foes who'd stolen the body, then why didn't they produce that body? When the resurrection preaching started, it would have collapsed the whole thing like a pack of cards. No, they didn't produce the body because they couldn't. Jesus had risen from the dead. How marvelous. That's the message we have this Easter. And it's a message, dear ones, we have to go out and tell. People won't hear it, Paul says, unless there's a messenger to tell it. And so that something we do in order that people can find faith, I have the privilege this Easter of writing of, of, a, of a whole page article, if you can believe it, in our newspaper on finding Easter faith. No use just talking about it. We need to find it. That's wonderful. That's what we want people to do. That's what AE's work is, to show people how to find Easter faith, how to find Christ. That's also a blessing for you, dear one, and your life at this time just to know the resurrection power of Jesus and the forgiveness of friends of sins this Easter in a new way. God bless you and au revoir.